Nashville, Tennessee. Seems as if these Tennessee Titans haven't been able to slow down any offense. Not true. They fared well against the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. On November 22, the Ravens passed for only 177 yards and totaled 306 yards. Those were each season bests for the Titans' defense, which allowed six other teams to reach 306 in passing yards alone. But Jackson struggled against the Titans when it mattered most, and Derrick Henry, 133 yards rushing, outran the Ravens, 129, by himself. At the end of regulation, the Titans forced Jackson into two incompletions at the 10, prompting a game, tying field goal. Then in overtime, the Titans got a sack and forced a punt in overtime, leading to Henry's game, winning touchdown. More, Tom Brady, Tampa Bay Bucks hold off feisty Washington football team in NFL playoffs more, opinion, Sean McVay banking on a different script for Rams NFL playoff run a 30,24 victory made for the Titans best defensive performance this season. Not a high bar there, though it's odd it came against such a formidable offense and fearsome playmaker at quarterback. Combine it with last season's 28,12 upset Titans win in the AFC Divisional Round, and it makes a perplexing prelude to Sunday's playoff reunion at Nissan Stadium. Despite the Ravens being a three-point favorite in the pick for many national pundits, recent history begs to differ. Football can be weird sometimes. Some teams match up poorly with others on a recurring basis, and it's not always clear why. How is it the Titans, of all defenses, have had Jackson's number? After last season's playoff game, Jackson said the Titans caught us by surprise. That's all it was. That couldn't have been the case in November, though. After that one, Jackson said the Titans simply wanted it more than us. I'm not sure either was necessarily the cause. Perhaps the 2019 Ravens were overconfident, yes, and the 2020 Titans have indeed been known to finish games strong. But it had more to do with the phrase, pack the paint. That's how former Titans defensive coordinator Dean Pease described the game plan to me. When I asked him about last season's playoff victory, the idea was to crowd the center of the field, limit big runs and throws up the middle and force Jackson and the offense to go horizontally rather than vertically. We've got to make him run to the sideline. We've got to make him throw to the sideline, Peace said he told Titans defenders beforehand. Forget the yardage. Yardage makes no difference. The only thing that's going to matter against this team is them not scoring points. Sure enough, Jackson accumulated 508 total yards that night, but little came easily. He threw two interceptions and lost a fumble. The Ravens had six drives of at least 10 plays, and yet only one of them resulted in a touchdown. A 12 play drive and a 14, play drive each amounted to a field goal. And the Ravens ended up 0, 4, 4 on 4th down. Our guys did a tremendous job of believing in the game plan and then executing it, P said. That defensive approach didn't change in November's rematch in Baltimore. Listening to Titans coach Mike Vrabel and his players this week, it hasn't changed now, either. This season's Ravens haven't been as dominant defensively as they were in 2019, but they've improved. They are peaking at the right time, having closed the regular season on a five-game win streak, during which they've averaged 37.2 points. As for Jackson, has definitely playing his best football of the year at this time, Ravens coach John Harbaugh said. At the same time, additional pressure is on Jackson this week. He has fielded questions about past playoff losses in those two games against the Titans. Our mindset is different, Jackson pledged. For what it's worth, I don't think the Titans' mindset is going to be. We'll have to be ready for really anything, Rabble said this week, but I think that they're going to be consistent in what they've done and probably shown on film. At the end of the day, you're going to have to force the ball outside and see if you can chase them down.